It's with a great deal of pleasure that we are welcoming Yannick Etienne, one of the founding members of Bata Ouvrier. And Bata Ouvrier is an autonomous workers' movement in Haiti, the organizing force behind all the independent workers' unions that have been in struggle to defend workers' rights in Haiti in several areas of the country, from bitter orange plantations to coffee sorting operations uh, to bottling plants, and particularly in the three industrial zones of Haiti, uh, namely Côte de near the border with the Dominican Republic, uh, Sonapi, the industrial park in Port-au-Prince, the capital of Haiti, and in Caracol, the newly founded industrial park in the north of Haiti. Yannick, uh, it's great having this opportunity to speak with you. How are you doing? Oh, I'm fine, and uh, I'm okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, so... Well, Yannick, we received a press release from SOTA, SOTA, the Union of Garment Workers in the Port-au-Prince Industrial Park, uh, stating that you had been a victim of, of an, uh, an aggression on um, Friday, January 30th. Uh, could you please tell us about this uh, attempted assassination attempt? Yeah. Well, we consider it as an assassination attempt because it's been uh, uh, months that uh, we talk, we've been uh, telling the workers uh, what happened, what was the result of the negotiation that we had so with him went and then with uh, the factory owner regarding respecting the 300 words for people that are involved in production. As you may know that uh, the law, the minimum wage law, has a, a two-tier you know, a minimum wage. And uh, so that at one point, if you just go and work, you just get 225 words. But if you produce, you have a, a number, you have a quota of production, they have to pay you at least 300 goods for eight hours. So we know there were some violations on this aspect, like not paying the workers the 300 goods, even though they were taking more than eight hours, and then or they will pay them unless they make nine or ten hours a day. And then, so for this reason, we felt that it was very important that uh, the factory owners don't have any excuse for not paying the 300 goods uh, for eight hours of work uh, a day, you know, at the minimum. So this is why we went into the uh, negotiation, having talks with the, uh, the, the brand, telling them this is the law. They have to pay and their, uh, so their contractors. They have to give them the money so that the workers can be paid the 300 goods. So we've been fighting this since, uh, I mean, two years. So at least we have a... Uh, uh, a conclusion, a positive conclusion. So they accept not only the brand but also the factory owner that the workers will get their 300 goods to stay out production and for 300 goods per day at least. So we managed in, you know, in some, uh, actually we had a, an agreement with uh, three main t shirt producers in, in Haiti. And so Minty Web is one of them and producing for his friends. But those companies agree that the workers should get the 300 goods for eight hours a day. And we managed to have, uh, 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 by uh, negotiating the quota of production where some workers even get 425 goods for eight hours uh, uh, per day. So this is the kind of... Uh, uh, the, the, the struggle, the fight that we have been putting uh, for the last year. And then into the negotiation, of course, in agreement, you have different clauses. One of the clauses, we start negotiating since last January. We spent about three months, some, some, uh, some places was four months. So we made an attempt to say, okay, since you agree to pay the 200 good, at least the people should get it in a retro, in a retroactively 
by uh, the day that uh, the time is start negotiating. And this is how, and while negotiating, we didn't get the four months, we get the two months. So for this particular company in you know, a multi-year, so the worker was supposed to get the, the retroactive pay or the back pay from um, February and March, okay, those two months. So we asked uh, the company, the brand, to calculate how much the workers were missing, you know, from the 300 goods. They find that the, the workers were not getting the 300 goods, but when they look at 90% of the workers were not getting the, the 300 goods and agreed to pay back this money. For, for, for this company, it was about 4000 205 uh, dollars, you know, if I think I have it correct, from the way, yeah, it was 4,265 dollars and When you change it, it would have give you about, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, 216 goods, uh, 216,000 goods, you know, when you uh, change it you know, Haitian uh, currency. So this is, uh, so we've been telling the workers this is the amount of money they were getting. But the other union says they, who were not involved in the agreement, in the negotiation, they, you know, kept telling the workers, no, it wasn't true, it could, that uh, we, we, the money was $114 million and that uh, we, we, we still the money. So they've been having this kind of campaign against us, us that we, we are cheating the workers by taking their money. They even said that we already took the money. So the last time when I went, because of this money was supposed to be given in January, and they were not given. So we went, you know, in December. So yeah, now we le left a little time. So those unions who came that they were, the money was supposed to be $114 million, to give it to the workers. They didn't have any, they couldn't give it, so we would go back to the factory and tell them to distribute the money, you know, as the, 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 the agreement and uh, said. So this is why, you know, when I went there on January 30, just to tell the factory owner that now enough is enough, he has to give the money to the workers because the money belongs to the workers. It's their money, you know, it should be redistributed to them, they should distribute them back. So when I left uh, the gate of the factory, there was a group of workers, you know, coming at me, telling that oh, this is Yannick, this is Yannick, we have to get rid of her, she's stealing our money, and you know, and stuff like that. She was she was not supposed to be there. And then I, I come, I'm telling them, well, I don't have any money, and I don't have anything to tell them, because, uh, uh, you know, that's not, I'm not supposed to tell them anything. They have their own union. If they believe what we said, we only distribute uh, different uh, issues about this. We had meetings with the workers in the factories and tell them, you know, what, what was the agreement, the result of the negotiation and everything. So I don't know what they're talking about. So they become more, a little bit more violent, you know, uh, by the time. And then, so I tried to reach my, uh, my car. And then uh, and they stopped me. They didn't want me to get in the car, and they start uh, you know telling me all kinds of uh, you know words and you know very you know foul uh, words. And then okay, I told them you know to get, get back, back off, you know. And then uh, well, and then they, I had other members so we with me, so we pushed them away, you know, so I could get in the car. So when I get in, but they didn't want to to close, want me to close the door, they hold the the the, the, the doors, the car doors, and then uh, so I had to confront them again to close the door, and then of course, and I turn the car, so I will make a U-turn to leave. Uh oh, they wouldn't let me, you know, they forced me to stay, and they uh, uh, they had the uh, rocks, you know, banging on, on the cars. And then after they were going to throw the rocks at, at <laughs> me, and then uh, and then they came uh, the security agent from the park, telling me to stop, you know, and that we, you know, the security agent thought, you know, I was 
the person, you know, gives was in, 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 in the reason for this, and then, uh, and then I told him, so I had to go into an argument with the security agent, and those are the people who are, you know, aggressing me. It's not me. I'm, I don't have anything to do with this and, and stuff like that. It's me. While I'm doing this, they punctured, you know. There were three of them, you know, and they punctured the tires. So I had three tires punctured. And then I saw them, you know, while I was walking to the car, I saw they had scissors, they had scoop scissors, and they have rocks into their hands. So this is why I said that because the way they were talking, the way they were, you know, challenging me while I'm while telling them, you know, what you're saying is lies, you know, it's not true, you know, perfectly that, that, that kind of amount of money, it's ridiculous. You know, how can you imagine uh, a company will give 140 million? Why well, should give to 140 million? You know, it's already enough that they, they, they agree that this kind, this type of uh, violation was going on. At, you know, with even if it's not a lot, you know, for the, the, the for those two months, it was just uh, uh, the 4,265 uh, uh, dollars. But it says something. This is a proof that this type of uh, uh, violations were going on. Like uh, the workers were making eight hours of work, and they were not getting the 200 goods. And uh, although they were working on uh, 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 of production, so this was enough for us to tell. Even you know, I'm thinking that the, the, the amount of money is is not the most important thing. It's just to find that yes, there were some uh, uh, violations that were going on. So I think uh, those uh, people didn't understand what we were doing. They didn't understand the importance of. Uh, uh, of uh, the brands and the factory owners to accept the fact that there were those violations going on and accept to pay back and uh, to, to give back this, this money, this amount of money. How um, small it may be, but it, it shows that this is a problem that we've been fighting on. And uh, so it's a pity that uh, these people calling them unions, you know, and then for doing this, attacking me for something that I think it was a positive step to continue to fight so they would, uh, you know, so the workers will get, you know, uh, and, uh, something and, and better and they will have a, a better uh, living condition. So this is what we've been fighting for. And you find other uh, uh, people, other groups, you know, attempting to, uh, to kill that. Uh, but uh, uh, this is why we feel that this is an assassination attempt because not only they have this type of, uh, of uh, they have scissors, screwdrivers, and, and rocks, and in Haiti, you don't play with this because and people got killed with this type of uh, type of uh, uh, instrument, and, and they were very angry. They were telling telling me that you know I'm I stole their money you know, and, and, and stuff like that. So in Haiti, they don't play with thieves. <laughs> and uh, if you have a group of workers who have who are in a really uh, difficult situation and you are telling them that this person is killing their money, and, uh, I mean, it's no joke. So I had, it was a very, very uh, tense uh, moment. Uh, I agree with him touch me really, you know, physically, but what they did, you know, it was very, very close. And then, uh, so, so this is why I feel that it's important. So I, I, uh, I, I thank a lot of people who send me notes, who send me email, you know, solidarity email. And then, uh, so I totally agree that we should accept this type of, uh, uh, but just this type of uh, uh, attitude that uh, uh, so-called unions are doing, and we have to fight yellow unions. We have to fight unions who are getting money, it, it, using you know unions as a business front to get money. Uh, you know, so I think this is what this this assassination attempt 
it, it, this is what it shows to the world that uh, we have to fight, continue the fight. We are on the right uh, position, the right uh, direction that we have to continue to fight for the for the for the factory owners. The brand should respect workers' rights. Should respect uh, the law. You know, even though the minimum wage law is not enough. You know, it's not a decent wage, but at least they should respect it. So that's what we've been fighting, and it's last year, it's last January, and then, and then now, you know, we have to move on. We have to fight for better, uh, better wages. We have to fight, continue to fight for workers' rights so they will respect human rights. At least this is the place, you know, we we find uh, a, a, a space where we could. Uh, have meetings with the factory owners, tell them what we want, tell them this is the situation. We have different meetings, you know, until we get this type of result. And then those a type of uh, yellow unions, they don't want this to happen. And then they want to be in a position where they could uh, say that put pressure and then get money for and then the workers won't get anything. And uh, so this is what we're still fighting. And then thank, we thank people for supporting us, and uh, I really felt really great that when I saw so many letters, so many, you know, solidarity uh, notes that I received, and after the the, the press release was published, you know, and uh, from, uh, from, so I really thank you, the fight will continue, we'll still go on, and then, and thank you. Well, for those of us that are listening now and who want to have more information, they can access the Bataille website at B-A-T-A-Y.O-U-V-R-I-Y-E.O-R-G. That's Bataille in Creole. Uh, and they can find some documentation regarding this, this struggle. And as a point of reference also, uh, 300 gourds per day, the, um, the legal production wage that uh, has been negotiated is roughly about $6.50 a day or roughly $0.80 per hour. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about a struggle over uh, back wages owed to workers, two months' worth of back wages owed to workers that to this day factory owners in Haiti are are still um, not in compliance with their agreement to pay these workers the two months' worth of back wages that have been negotiated as part of the struggle to adjust the minimum wage in Haiti to a living wage level. And uh, we've been talking with Yannick Etienne, Yannick Etienne, a long-standing uh, uh, organizer, a founding member of Bata Ovrie, Bata Ovrie, which is an autonomous workers' movement that has been the driving force behind the establishment of, of, of many independent workers' unions in Haiti, particularly in the assembly sector. Now, uh, Yannick, for those who are listening to you today, it's uh, in, in, in the U.S. and in other parts of the world, it's a little bit hard to understand the difference between what we're calling yellow unions and autonomous independent workers' unions. Uh, can, you, uh, can you explain to, to us what the difference is and, and how these yellow unions come to be established in Haiti and how they function? Because most workers in the U.S. and in an industrialized uh, world are used to the business union, trade union model, and they have maybe a little bit of a hard time understanding what an an independent workers' union is, how it functions, and how it's different from a yellow union. Well, actually, you know, like right now, we are living this situation in Haiti. As you know, that uh, we had a spike over the gas prices because uh, the government... uh, the, the, you know, the price uh, oil is getting down, uh, you know, and uh, you know, in, in the United States, so the price the guys at the pump was uh, uh, was uh, getting lower and lower, and then in this period of time, and in Haiti, they didn't change anything. We 
they were paying and uh, the, the, the gas at five dollars, you know, five U.S. dollar per gallon. We still paying for it. So it was a movement, uh, uh, a movement, you know, and uh, uh, by the union and transport union, you know, to put uh, to ask the government to lower the gas uh, uh, in in Haiti. But what happened? They went into negotiation. And then what they really got was so little, you know, like a, a lot of people, you know, right now are so fed up with, you know, so, you know, they're very mad about the results of the negotiation. So we know these people uh, who were at the negotiation table with uh, the, the Minister of uh, Finance, you know, and now uh, we know that uh, these type of... Uh, Union, they have unions. They are just sitting at the table for uh, getting something for their for personal for personal use. Like uh, this union, usually the yellow union, usually up front is they, 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 they are yelling, they are very loud, and then at the end they're doing this just as a front, just as a, uh, to justify the money they will get under the table. You know, in Haiti. Uh, those, uh, a lot of unions, they use uh, negotiation with the government to get other privileges, other uh, uh, whatever money for their projects, uh, personal projects, or projects for their own union, you know, to make money. This is, what, this is one case, this is one example of, of the kind of yellow union we have in Haiti. But in, the, in other uh, states, you know, like the assembly plants and other uh, uh, units of productions or services, you found uh, union leaders, you know, going to the, to the, the either the factory owners, uh, you know, uh, or the, uh, yes, yeah, factory owners to what's called patron in Haiti and all management, you know, to uh, ask them to give them pressure so that they said, well, if you don't give us money, we will have a strike, you know. So you have people uh, like uh, in those unions going to get money. Usually it's to get money or from the, the management or they go to the Ministry of Labor and then they bring up their own little project saying that we want to do this for the workers and then and you should give us the money for this particular project. So you have this type of uh, type of action where it's the, the yellow union, they are not fighting in the interest of the workers, they are fighting for their own interests, the personal, they are using unions as a business, you know, they're using the union as a business fund, you know, for the personal use or personal uh, being. Uh, uh, as well being in, in a way. So we have this stuff. Or you have this union who will fight everything that other unions are doing in the interest of the workers. And then, they were, you know, making sure that that thing, you know, like they will fight against you, they will uh, attempt to, 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 you know, like in the, in the factory floor, they will, you know, do things to you, to other workers. So you have the, 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 the workers will have will be in trouble, and then they will send them or suspend the workers or fire them. So you find all kinds of there are different examples of the way they act, you know, to make sure that the workers who really want to fight or the union who want to fight and uh, uh, be in the interest of the workers, particularly the interest of the workers. Because the, uh, the workers' interest is totally different from the fat workers, from the buses. So what happens, they are claiming they are fighting for the workers, but actually they are not fighting in the interest of the workers. This is for us different, uh, the, the, the scope that we have in, in Haiti, like uh, if union is a big affair and uh, it's not something for, each, for workers, and the workers, they don't have any control of what they do. And by the leadership, they, they, do, they do not report to the, to the rank and file. The rank and file are not aware 
or what goes on on the top. So this type of functioning as a bureaucratic, you know, or uh, using the union money for the personal, uh, uh, personal uh, use. So if you have this type of situation also in Haiti, and, uh, but I know, and uh, uh, we are not yet that situation where you found uh, union union becoming functioning like a mafia like uh, type of organization. Uh, not yet in Haiti, but they are working towards this situation in some uh, in some sectors. It is happening right now. And Yannick, just just to contrast that, could you go over some of the organizing principles of independent workers' unions? No, first of all, uh, it's a question of your autonomous struggle. It has to be something really based on the interest of the workers. So if it's not the interest, you know, you don't base the struggle on the interest of the workers, you wouldn't go far. So this is actually the main point. It has to be in the interest of the workers. You know, no matter what could be family, working conditions, social benefits, it has to be in the interest of the workers. The workers, the, 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 the class, they belong, you know, to, uh, so the, the workers has their own interests, you know, and uh, so as a class, so they have the, what, when we say the workers' interests, we're talking about their the, uh, interest, class interest of this group of people, you know, who are part, who are belong to this class. So this is what we've been saying that we are fighting, you know, that I will say, we are fighting in an autonomy struggle in the interest of the workers, because it's what interests the workers, what concerns the workers, that we are fighting for. Yeah, and I understand it's quite a struggle to, uh, also because uh, once uh, union leadership is actually voted and negotiations start, very often you have struggles within the union itself to uh, combat um, attempts by management to co-opt uh, this union leadership. So it's, 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 it's not only a struggle in, in establishing uh, autonomous, independent workers' unions, but it's also a continuous struggle in maintaining, uh, in, in maintaining them and, and making sure that they continue to function democratically and represent the actual uh, interests of the workers. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the question is democracy. When I say the and they, those uh, uh, union leaders, the union leaders, yellow union leaders, are doing things. They are doing things without and uh, uh, the no knowing of rank and file workers, and they do not have uh, to report to the to the rank and file, and the rank and file uh, do does not control the union. So it's a question of democracy. Also, it's very important when there are no meetings, or the, and whenever they are not reporting what they're doing, whenever the rank and file the state do not recognize themselves in their, their leadership, this is what you are. In the, this, this is what you are in the situation where yellow union leaders are, are uh, you know, are, uh, are the game. This is the game. It's a question of. Uh, uh, using this as a business fund that is not really unionism. When we say union, we're talking about independence, we're talking about autonomous struggle, we're talking about democracy, we're talking about the European file really controlling what's going on in the union. Well, Yannick, it's been great having this opportunity talking with you. Uh, Yannick, a, a long-standing organizer, for over 30 years now in workers' movement, workers' movements, autonomous workers' movements, independent workers' movements in Haiti, uh, one of the founding members of Batavouye, and uh, we are pledging our solidarity to you. And uh, in the face of this outrageous attempt, not only uh, in terms of attempting to intimidate you, but actually an, an actual attempt on your life, so uh, we're pledging our solidarity to you, and um, we wish you the very best. 
and we will try to spread the world as uh, as much as we can to build uh, support and solidarity with the continuing struggle of workers in Haiti and throughout throughout the world also. Thank you. You know, again, I will say to everybody, the people who are listening to me, the people who are supporting the uh, workers' struggle all over the world, thank you for this show of solidarity. I really appreciate it, and uh, I think it's important that we, we, we use this as, a, as a, an example to show, uh, you know, solidarity among, uh, you know, solidarity forever. I've been telling that, you know, all the time, and I really... And what I saw, you know, the letters that I receive, uh, and all the solidarity, the, the nice word that I receive, you know, and uh, I really could say, you know, solidarity forever and long, uh, long live the workers' struggle, particularly autonomous workers' struggle. Thank you. So we ask all of those that are listening to this message to go to the Bataille Ouvrier website at b a t a y o u v r i y e dot o r g and to the onestruggle.net website to find more information and more links to get involved in this solidarity campaign. Yannick, once more time, we thank you, and uh, we stand with you, and uh, we'll keep on top of this developing um, struggle, and uh, we'll talk to you again very soon. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right. Bye. Bye.